Hi everybody, this is Damien Ferry from The Unshackled, live here at the Stalwart Bastion 2018. I'm here with Samrat, that's um, going to be one of the people defending the cathedral. And um, tell us a bit about yourself, Samrat. Um, I'm Samrat Joshua Griwal, I work for the Christian Democratic Party. I'm here with Charles Knox, defending the cathedral against all the, you know, the Mardi Gras marches that want to take nude photos with the statues and defile it, I guess, and, you know vandalized church property. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, is it your first time at the event? Uh, yeah, first time. Um, I expected it to be less people, but it turns out it's going to be about 50 this time, so it's a pretty good turnout. Good turnout, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. And um, w- as a Christian, I mean, um, how, how does this event, um, like how important is it for you to um, be able to take a stand like this and and be able to protect the cathedral yeah. against um, hooligans and everything that's going to be um, coming out tonight. Yeah. Well, the Catholic Church, you know, it is, regardless of whether you're Catholic or not, is a symbol, it represents all of Christianity. And when you have you know, gay people standing at the cathedral attacking the church itself and defying the church, it's really an attack on Christianity in general. So being able to stand there, you know, basically defend it, it's really about defending kind of all Christians in a sense, you know, and protecting the symbol that represents us all. So, you know, mm. it's really great to be able to do that here and have the opportunity to, to you know, a big symbol of uh, Western civilization, yeah, I guess you could, um, a, a great piece of architecture, um, you know, it's been standing for, uh, I'd say, um, since mid-1800, so yeah. it's um, it's definitely something that represents our traditions and values, and uh, no matter of your kind of core central belief, it's something that unites us against um, the activities that go on yeah. these days in modern times. So, um, what are your views uh, on the Mardi Gras in itself? Yeah, well... Oh, so I think it's, it's stupid now. Like at first, it's okay in the sense you know they want to kind of express their rights and all that. But when they take it overboard, you know they go shirtless, new, they you know hang out their parts, they they really sexualize a lot, and they go further and they, they defile people's property. They you know swear at people, attack people, they you know act disorderly. Mm. If they conduct it properly, we wouldn't have as much of a problem. But the way they do it is just disgusting. You know, people bring their kids to the event. The kids, you know, men dressed up as women, men rubbing their nipples and touching each other in all <laughs> these weird ways. It's just, yeah. That's exactly right. I mean, um, and like you said, especially when it comes to the kids involved in it, yeah. um, I know that uh, the ABC um, Kids Channel was representing it and promoting it as a, a family event, even though we know that, um, you know, two guys and two girls can't have a family. It's, yeah. um, it's just not a, a norm at all that that is quite possible. But um, yet they're trying to... Uh, push these views out on society that um, this is now to be embraced as such that these things even though for thousands of years was looked down upon now it's yeah. all of a sudden um, accepted and and promoted so I mean um, we've seen an attack um, when it comes to the education system and you know uh, everything that the the school children um, what, what they're going through in in their learning and the curriculums and everything what, what, what do you think about in regards just basically today's children like whether it be our kids our grandkids what they're going to be going through now and what they're going to be going through also in say you know um, 40 years time yeah when it comes to schools I guess one of the really hypocritical things about them is they you know they say they don't want to bring politics in schools they try to you know avoid bringing political groups in schools yet the entire curriculum is really politicized when I was going um, in school in Western Sydney we had to learn about feminism, how feminism was good for society, you know, third wave feminism. We had to learn about Stalinism and, and, and the communist revolution, and we learned about how it was somehow good for society, you know, despite the fact millions are killed after. You know, I think the schooling system is really where people are pushing the leftist agenda, and you know, everyone else just stands back and does nothing. They don't really take a stand for it, which you know, I, I don't understand why. You know, that's where they get them when they're younger and more malleable and more susceptible to you know, being indoctrinated to leftist beliefs. You know, like safe schools, you've heard of that, and you know, it's unsafe, really. Yeah. You know, they teach you about how it's the okay for, you know, it's natural for a man and for a man to come together and you know, engage in all sorts of disgusting activities. Mm-hmm. They, they just really push it on school children in schools, and they try to claim that, oh, school's not political, and they just really politicize it. And also, of course, you know, gender fluid and, yeah, um, you know, fluid, um, yeah. teaching them that they can um, change One genders. What happens in schools mm. is if a, a student comes out or says they might be experiencing sexual dysphoria, most of the teachers jump at that and actually try and encourage them to explore that. Mm-hmm. And you know, that happened with me once when I was in that phase, you know, like, what's going on here, what does this mean, kind of thing. And then, 
at, at first, you know, the scent of me being a little bit curious. Um, at the, you know, when it comes to gender story, when I when I was in school, um, I, I expressed, you know, that I might be a little bit you know, interested in what this kind of gender identity thing is. And at the first kind of scent of that, the deputies of the school approached me, you know, they sat me down in the office and they started discussing it to me, you know, saying, oh, it's okay, if you like you can talk to us about that. They tried to kind of coerce me into saying that I was something I wasn't. And you know, so it's really hard where they just push on to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly right, we've got a bit of noise here in the background. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, do you believe as a Christian that um, just like it was a common reality back in the day, uh, for these kind of people, um, the degenerates, to have to go underground. Do you think that one day our churches are going to be underground? Absolutely. You know, the church was born underground. And I think, you know, the way it's going, you know, the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, even Pentecost churches and the Protestant ones, they don't speak up loud enough against this. And they keep trying to please these left people, you know, in hopes of God knows what they're trying to achieve. Mm. You know, eventually what's going to happen is, you know, we've seen every, you know, um, big left-wing figures say, they come out, you know, saying, oh, the school of the church is doing this and that, but now let's ban churches and schools, let's ban um, chaplains and schools, let's get rid of religion and schools, you know, let's get religion all together. And they come in and they try to, you know, oh, let's not have any religious references anywhere in the Constitution. They try to remove religion from the nation itself. And there will come a time, you know, when, when you know, me and my kids, if I ever have kids, you know, they'll be forced to, to, to kind of hide that from everyone, you know. Becoming Christian will be the weird thing, you know. This, mm. Like, what are you, Christian now, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, back then it was, you know, be, being a bad person, you know, thieving was something you had to hide. Yeah. And now it's like, Christians have come to crime. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what is this? That's exactly, you know? exactly One a thing good I, I express a lot now is, um, when I was younger, being a Christian was, you know, I'm a Christian. And, you know, that to me was normal. Mm. And now when I say I'm a Christian, I, my mindset's changed, you know. Sometimes I feel like I'm radical because I say I'm a Christian, you know. Mm. I feel really, really, you know, on, on the very verge of politics just because I believe in the God. Mm. And it's just ridiculous. It is, yeah. I mean, um, it's definitely something not to look forward to. Um, I mean, when it comes to, I guess, the moral decay that we've been going through for, I mean, it's been 40 years now for, since the Mardi Gras has been happening and I'd say to pin it down, it's been at least 50 years or so that things have started to change yeah. through the revolutions and whatnot. I mean, when do you think um, it all started, or it all began, and um, the kind of um, progress over time that you've seen? Yeah. So, I, I wasn't there 50 years ago, but from mm. what I know, and from you know what schools teach and stuff, it all started with the Marxist kind of cultural revolution. In the sense that, you know, here's Western culture, everyone likes Western culture, if you want everyone to join communism and become communists, we've got to destroy Western culture. Mm. And so this idea of you know, accelerationism, that they go to Western culture that promotes liberty and stuff, and you take it to an extreme extent, and it collapses upon itself, and then, you know, we the communists would come up and, as the saviors of man and, and bring everyone under our fold. It's that kind of idea. So that's why I think it really started. Because, you know, you got gay people wearing linen, you know, Vladimir Lenin on their shirts. Mm -hmm. And they, they didn't realize that Vladimir Lenin would have put them in a gulag and killed them. <laughs> and it's stupid, you know, it's just, what is wrong with you? You're that's supporting right. a man that wants you dead. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the way they've been brainwashed in such a manner, you know. They'll mm. support, you know, they don't understand... Well, it seems, it seems in a lot of ways that this, the so-called system that they're trying to fight is a system that um, accepted and allowed them to yeah. carry on the degeneracy in the first place, yeah. um, which, you know, is the kind of um, double standard or, um, you know, the, the, the funny joke about it all, like you were yeah. saying with um, communists not being, you know, approving of this kind of activity and... Uh, and them trying to destroy, you know, uh, a, a liberal capitalist society, fair enough, um, yeah. I guess. Uh, even though they're the ones that actually, you know, gave them the, the rights to, to do all these things in the first place. And, I mean, obviously we, um, we, we've we gone through, um, you know, that they can get adoption laws. Um, they can now get married as well, as we saw last year. So, I mean, what do you see in the slippery slope argument coming down the line? Yeah, well... You know, it's just one thing after that to say, you give them an inch and they take a mile, that's the way they, they kind of... The people, people think, when they think of the LGBT, whatever, the ABC group, they think, you know, maybe if they just want marriage rights, and they think it'll stop at that. And then they think, oh, maybe they just want, you know, adoption rights, and stop at that. But if you go back and you trace the paper trail to where it all started, mm. it starts off with communism. Mm. And the end goal isn't to have gay rights, so the end goal is to destroy the gay movement itself and establish communism in Western countries. And people just don't see that, you know, they're just oblivious to the fact 
you know, it's ridiculous now. If someone walks down the street wearing a communist shirt and they don't understand what that means, that, you know, <laughs> it means you want to overthrow Western society, you know, it's like, how much more blind can you get? That's that's They're exactly right. Their hands over their eyes. And... Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a, it was a sad day last year when when that occurred, and it was yeah. a bit of a shock to us all, really, that uh, we weren't expecting. Even though uh, the narrative was that they were going to win quite comfortably, we didn't really believe it until it happened, and it was it yeah. was a real big shock to the system, yeah. I think. And I mean, like you said, if if it was that they only wanted marriage, I mean, that's what they said about when they had civil unions. Yeah. They didn't want marriage, and when they got civil unions, then they started pushing for the next thing. And, I mean, if you go back 40 years ago when um, uh, criminalisation um, ended, um, when it came to homosexual practice, it, um, I mean, the people of back then just thought, oh, yeah, all they want is to be accepted. Yeah. And, I mean, they would have laughed if somebody from nowadays went back in time and said, oh, yeah, these guys are going to get married one day. They, they would have laughed at you. I mean, that, no one would have believed it. Yeah. And that's why today... When um, people laugh at the fact that there's going to be more things down the line, well, all they have to do is look at history and see that that, that all that happened in 40 years. So yeah. what's going to happen in the next 40 years? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Last 40 years we had what? We had gay marriage come out, we had the suffrage movement, then we had you know, feminism movements and stuff. Feminism, yeah. We look at the weight, you know, 40 years, you know, women weren't walk, working alongside men in offices, mm. now they are. Mm. You know, 40 years ago you had all these things that weren't accepted now they are mm. and you know there's been no research into the effects of these things there's been no you know, no one's actually thought you know how could this affect society the society, society's never experienced such a, a mass amount of changes in such a small time that's right and the same amount of time before you know it all just falls apart really mm. that's what they hope for so um j just um with your i guess you can say how you were saying you were in the cdp uh yeah. what's your role in the cdp and how are you doing with that yeah so in the CDP, I, I do a variety of roles in a sense. Um, most is administration, but I, I work alongside um, doing things with the youth group uh, with mm. the young CDP, so the youth will know that. Um, we're trying to focus on you know, educating young people about you know, what it is mm. that these movements are about, you know, taking them back to the roots of movements. Mm. So as opposed to what you know, normal groups are doing, they just say, you know, gay people are bad, and LGBT is bad, and they're bad because they you know, gay rights and stuff, and that's against what the Bible says. But we're, we're trying to take it back to the roots of it, you know, that it's not them that are pushing this. We're trying to talk about the people behind the pushing it. We want to teach young people how to you know, defend themselves against their, you know, intellectual attacks, mm. you know. Well, it's nature, it's natural, this and that, you know, all this. No, 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 that's, it's, it's great yeah. that you're taking a stand. And, I mean, obviously you've got uh, Fred Nile that's yeah. uh, been representing Parliament since the 80s. And he's been um, a key figure voice in this. Um, you don't get uh, a lot of, I guess, conservatives these yeah. days really outspoken on the issue. It seems like they've all, I guess, uh, accepted defeat and and gone on the defensive, which is really sad uh, in in the political sphere. Even you know your modern day conservative, a lot of them are, are voting for uh, these um, progressive laws in relation to gay rights and um, even the ones that, that aren't or they're, they're very very soft about it they don't say a lot you know they're very you know on the border yeah. on the boundary and there's not many views out there that are very you know coming out and saying it how it is how it should be yeah. and we need more of that so it's great that there's a lot of people in the youth groups that, that are getting brought up and hopefully because I mean it's going to be hard to compete with those universities you know, the education system, um, it's stacked against us. So, obviously, you have a few, you know, young people coming in and yeah. it's making a start on something that, that might take a while to develop, but at least you're doing something there. Yeah. Um, last, last thing I was going to mention, I uh, wrote an article um, a few days back in relating to um, banning the Mardi Gras. Would you be in favour of that? Yeah, definitely, you know. Um, what the Mardi Gras does now... It's, it shouldn't be acceptable, you know. Mm. It's they basically walk around half nude. If I were to walk around like that in an underwear through a park of school children, <laughs> I'd probably get arrested. Well, they can do it in the thousands, and no one does anything. The police That's protect right. them instead. That's right. So, you know, all in favour of it, you know, they want to act like degenerates, they should be treated like everyone else mm. who acts like that. Well, that, that's a good point, actually, that I mentioned, that if um, somebody like us was to go yeah. um, on the streets like they are, we'd be arrested straight away, but they yeah. have, the, have the law backing so them. Double yeah, standard. Yeah, it is. New South Wales Police Department, yeah, they put up a, a, a gay pride flag, you know. <laughs> when was the last time they put up an Aboriginal flag, you know, or last time they put up a Christian flag, you know, in support of, of the majority of people in this country, mm, you know, not mm. support this 
minority of criminals mm -hmm. and it's just abhorrent. It, it is. I mean, and I actually noticed that just walking here today, I actually had a few policemen that were walking by and they actually had rainbow flags on them. And um, they are going to be, or a great deal of them are going to be marching in the, uh, in the Mardi Gras tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's sad to see that they've, you know, the, the police force, which has traditionally been like a tough kind of, you know, um, image, they've always had a, an image of, you know, protecting the people and yeah. serving and, and whatnot, that they've bowed down to something so, you know, um, I mean, it makes them look really weak and pathetic, really. And, and I mean, yeah. people that are genuine criminals, I mean, how can they take the police seriously when they're going around with rainbow flags? Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The same thing happened in the military where they're trying to implement the idea of, you know, um, if you're in support of, of, of gay people, then you should wear, like, a rainbow badge and stuff. Mm. And it was, it, what it really does is segregate people, so, you know. you got the people that support them, people that don't support them. If you don't support them, the military will treat you a little bit differently because you're not in favour of this really progressive ideal. Yeah. And it's the idea of what they do with the, the police force, they're trying to bring on their side, you know. So if you're not a police in favour of, you know, the Mardi Gras and stuff like that, and they kind of push you out of the force, and, mm. and it's just the way they kind of take over yep. um, our institutions and, you know, turn them against us. No, no, I mean, um, well, well, thanks for coming and um, representing um, the people because a lot of people might be at home and, and might be uh, thinking to themselves, oh, you know, I, I really don't approve of this, mm -hmm. but they're not really willing to take a stand and come out and, and you know, join the many that have come tonight to defend the cathedral and, and make a bit of a, a, a stand, you know, and um, voice their opinion and say, look, this isn't really acceptable, um, especially these days considering that they've, got all the so-called rights that they never had even though you know they weren't ever oppressed yeah. in the first place but they they have achieved everything that they were set out to so really these events are i guess irrelevant and don't really serve any purpose yeah. and just sexualize um society is a bad role model for children and it just yeah i mean it doesn't doesn't really um do anything for us so thanks for coming and um, it would be great to see you out. Yeah, thank you.